Welcome back to Softcore History. I'm your host for the week, Dan Rejester, and I'm joined, as always, by Rob Fox and Jake Goldman. What is up, boys? Woo! I'm fucking lit. I that, that was me bringing the energy. I'm I'm probably halfway through my life based on um, U.S. life expectancy for men. <laughs> Did you get that stat today, and just you've been pondering it? Well, since? it was my birthday yesterday. Was it really? Yeah. Oh my god. So I'm 38. Yeah, Dude, I never texted him. I didn't. I forgot your birthday, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it's just a little another, too late for us to add it to the kind of address of it things. at this point, right? I've, through half my life, I'm, I'm halfway to 76. I think 77 is the lifespan. You think you're going to make it to 76? I feel really bad I forgot your birthday. So I'm half. Look what I. I'm half. I'm. It's half over. I would say like four fifths over. It's half. I mean. No, genetically, I'm good to go. All my grandparents lived in their 90s. So you're like not even halfway then. But I feel like just statistically, I'm halfway. Hmm. What does that do for you? I just feel sad. Well, according to <laughs> Ross's doctor, something might be wrong with you. Yeah. He what? had to piss in a cup for Ross to pass a drug test. Pee. And Ross's doctor had to have a talk with him about <laughs> drinking. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> no, this is dead serious. You? you Ross pee- got an issue. You peed for someone else. Yeah. And then... They popped pee- for alcohol, even though he didn't drink the night before. I guess it was just oh. concerning levels. Oh, like actual blood alcohol level? No, no, no. no. Like there, he, he was just concerned. Pee, thought my pee was weird. Oh, it was, it was like, like you. You must drink several nights a week. It was like Billy Rubin. Apparently, yeah, I mean, I, I feel fine. Did Dude. I schedule a doctor's appointment because of that? Yes, but I feel <laughs> fine. I mean, holistically speaking, it's how you feel that's important. Yeah. Yeah. I feel great. Jake spent the weekend gardening. I did. Uh, I shoveled. A ton of crushed limestone Sick. over like three days, and like a fuck ton of mulch. What's funny is it sounds you like the least leisurely fucking weekend of all. It was amazing. I just did some hard labor. I you just throw in a pod and like you just shovel that stone, dude. Mm. Mm. What's funny is Rob brought up that his life is almost over, mm-hmm. and we're starting to get to that age where you kind of question: Is this it? Is this what I'm going to end up doing? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm there. I can't even look at myself. It's just like, huh. I'm like, oh, I guess we're going <laughs> to... What is that? What is it in No Country for Old Men? If the road you chose led you to hear what was the point of the road. <laughs> oh, man. Big vibes. <laughs> that's that's podcasting that's, in a nutshell. Just baby. Ki- Everyone's vibes. <laughs> just, just kill me, Anton. Just fucking kill me. Put that. Don't even make me flip the coin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just like just putting my forehead out to the fucking cattle thing. <laughs> you just swallow it. Like just, <laughs> <laughs> just eat the coin and deep throat the shotgun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that's how we start. That's how we start here at Softcore History. Great energy. Yep. Um, I'm not even gonna promote our Patreon. <laughs> Patreon.com slash softcore history. You can check it out on your own. We have two additional episodes every week. I'm not here to promote that though. I'm I'm here to just talk about when you reach a certain point in your life and you think it's a good idea to maybe kind of change the vibe, maybe go for it. Hard reset. Like a hard reset. Are we talking like ritual precipism here? No, we're talking about picking up everything you own and moving your family. Oh, so oh. just half of America or just yourself. Most Americans. We're talking about migration like, for the most part. That's what this episode's about, softcore history. Listeners know, obviously, because they clicked on the episode. They have the title. They have the description. I hate that they know before we do. Yeah, I don't know what's what the fuck's going on. <laughs> yeah. my, my guess is there's going to be a twist, and you're talking about people who migrated extremely violently. Not like colo- like American colonialism violent, but like Mongolian violent. Or people that were like literally shot out of a camp <laughs> yeah. in a different country. <laughs> no, we're talking about people that were doing pretty well that decided, you know what? This isn't good enough. Okay, who are we talking about? We're talking about some pioneers that went west. All right. Oh, nice. But they were already good to go. Yeah, we're sp- so specifically talking about the Donner Party. The Donner oh. Reed Party. You hear about this? You know about this? I've heard uh, vaguely about them. They are not like the funnest party. No, it sounds like a terrible time. <laughs> Bad vibes. It started out well but kind of fell off a cliff pretty quick. Yeah, I'm excited. In fact, uh, let's just get into it. Why, you know, 
Let's skip the pleasantries. Uh, did we skip? Ple- <laughs> I don't what think ple- we- uh, it hasn't been pleasant so far. Much like this entire migration west. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought, like, you brought it up naturally. I'm like, uh, fuck everything else. Let's just get into it. Yeah. Whatever. Death is inevitable. Yeah. And life wasn't that great. Oh, man. I'm really sorry I didn't say happy birthday to you, dude. I'm really feeling it now. I missed my opportunity. I can't do it. I'll do it next year. Yeah. I don't want it from either of you now. You have 364 <sighs> days. Don't feel bad, Jake. Uh, I'm allowed to feel what I want. My feelings are valid. Guess you were too busy shoveling limestone. <laughs> I really was. Limestone's more important than your friend Rob. <laughs> well, I couldn't close my gate. I had so much delivered, it was spilling out onto the sidewalk and in my backyard at the same time. I couldn't so. close my tear ducts. <laughs> oh. Um, at least you can cry. Ooh, he's got you there. Oh, that's stupid. You can feel emotion. <laughs> Actually, I don't feel bad for that. Yeah. that's what, that's. You know no. what's worse, dude? indescribable pain feeling nothing at all no it's not that i have a friend though that can physically not cry oh that's funny just dry heaves out of his eyes she does yeah oh that's hilarious it's not hilarious she just physically the tear ducts don't produce does it hurt um no but how do her eyes stay wet it looks sad uh not well she has to have eye drops constantly Ugh. that sounds rough it's not great no no and much like this party Led by George at the time, who was 60, George and Jacob, who was 56, his brother, Donner, and an Irish immigrant friend named James Reed. I bet I know who screwed it all up. I bet I know who they ate first. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking no kidding. You're not far off. (laughs) Maybe second. But you're not right either. Okay. He was second. No, you're not right. They were uh, farmers in Springfield, Illinois, making a pretty good living. Mm, I've been to Springfield. It's grim. Yeah, but this is like 1846. All right. Oh, wow. So maybe they met Abe Lincoln. Damn. Maybe just two ships passing in the night. Yeah. <laughs> like Abe Lincoln's buying a thing from a general store there in line behind him. It's like, oh, man, that guy's going to be present one day, and we're going to eat each other. <laughs> Crazy. We're going to be two of the most famous Americans from this time period for it's entirely different reasons. Yeah. This is less two ships passing the night and more a ship passing a fucking plane on fire <laughs> tail spinning so they packed up shop left springfield in april 14th 1846 with an initial group of 31 people mostly consisting of kids under 10 Ooh, little bodies for a lot, lot of labor a lot of bodies a lot of little ones for a lot, a lot of, of labor. toddlers That's but for some reason they're just like yeah springfield illinois we want more they, so you know like, what's funny about that by the way <laughs> They just you just peaked something like in my mind. They left uh, the day, uh, not the year of the day, but the day Lincoln was shot. Really, Lincoln was killed and or shot. He didn't die on April fourteenth. But John Wilkes Booth shot him on April fourteenth. Weird. It's almost like it is crazy. He didn't die that day. Shot him with point a little, blank in the fucking head. It was a little baby gun though. <sighs> yeah, and those things they didn't pack the punch. Still in the head. I want to see you take it. <laughs> I'll take it strong. You it probably, it probably wouldn't even hurt. No, our bones are so much thicker. Yeah. The skulls yeah. are. You would ah! think. Ah! You would think baby like, skulls Ow! would get tougher. What if it was like a, a, the equivalent of a BB gun? A BB gun? I don't yeah. know. I mean, if you didn't put enough powder in there. Yeah. It was, I think it was a flintlock pistol. Like it, but I mean, they did have revolvers then and with yeah. cartridges and shit, but I believe he used a flintlock. He was a thespian. He was going old had school. Had to be. Yeah. yeah. It had to Some be. Some ornate, stupid thing. Yeah. With like an inscription on it. It was dumb. They, of course, made their way to the Queen City. Independence, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You've been North there? of Kansas City, I believe. It's gross. Give me the top outside of St. Louis and Kansas City and Columbia. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the top. How did Queen City not become three. a thing? Because everybody took off from this location. Or, yeah, like uh, or Independence, Missouri. How did it not become bigger? Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of part of Kansas City, if I recall correctly. Like it's basically. Let me let me look it up again. I I really want an answer to the question I was gearing the up. The three for. best cities in is that why they're the three best? Cities. Is that why they're called the Kansas City Royals? Uh, no, that has to do with beef. That's dumb. Yeah, Independence is in is Metro KC. It's the like Royals in Queen City. That would make sense. That's it's not why. Okay. It has to do with it has it's to do the with beef. beef processing plant or something. Yeah, like that out something there. like that. That makes sense. Um. 
Three best cities that aren't Columbia, St. Louis, or Kansas City, Branson, or any Branson and Branson. Well, you kind of, maybe. I don't even fucking Silver know. Dollar City. I mean, it really falls off a cliff after. That's that. where you take your family for vacation. It's interesting. I. That's uh, I've never really thought about anything other than those three cities. So you do a little that's fishing, it. see Yakov Smirnoff. Mm -hmm. Did Although, you really? Did you go to Branson? Yeah, when I was like ten. That was one. I've never even been to Branson. <laughs> We've talked about this before. I was terrified of going to Branson. My family would save up for like a yearly vacation. It would always be the most random spots. Did mm -hmm. you have to go? Did you go to like Valley Forge? I live by Valley Forge. No, you probably went to Williamsburg, Colonial Williamsburg. No, Will, uh, Valley Forge though is right by uh, King of Prussia Mall. Is it? That's the place with like all the ridiculous attractions, right? Valley Forge. Yeah. I actually my friend who got married in philadelphia it's like a military academy there she got married uh right near valley forge and king of prussia mall as well uh, in like a colonial well on a colonial estate but not in the home or whatever am i thinking of pigeon valley maybe pigeon forge say? pigeon forge that's Is in that georgia what, what's the one with the dumb attraction roadside attractions all over it that's probably pigeon forge i think it's pigeon forge i think yeah. of the place in kentucky or not kentucky tennessee where dolly parton's uh theme park is dollywood dollywood yeah, but uh, it is also kind of like... There is a bunch of... I've been to a place in Tennessee that has a bunch of dumb shit like that. But all the yeah. cabins and everything. I think it's it's not Pigeon Forge, but it's something similar. Pigeon Forge is Georgia, because there's a Twitter account. who It's like fake, and it always brags about... It's like a co uh, three-year letterman or whatever. Yeah. That Twitter account always brags about having a vacation spot in Pigeon... Or just like going on vacation to Pigeon Forge. <laughs> like, it's okay. like badass. Yeah, that's definitely it then. Yeah. Yeah. Glad we established all this. So they leave Independence, Missouri... <laughs> little late because they get there late uh so kind of what are they supposed to do live there for a year no exactly but they had to leave earlier get your ass on the road yeah also queen city taken but i'm saying the standard deadline to leave usually for the west around april like late april right you like want that's you want to do it in the summer you got to yeah. get there before it gets cold yeah they but, get there and leave may 12th on the last caravan out Last train out's not the best train to be on. Nah. Cincinnati's the Queen City, by the way. Why is it called Yeah, but that? Independence was called the Queen City. Though. I know, I'm sure it is, but it's it got overshadowed by the bigger Queen City. Mm. Cincinnati is Cincinnati the Queen bigger? City? Significantly. Uh, right? I don't know than KC, but certainly than Independence. Yeah. But Independence at this point is like suburban Kansas City. First few weeks were somewhat pleasant. Everyone was in a good mood initially, taking in nature, singing songs, dancing. Yeah, it's fucking May and yeah. June. Having in beautiful, beautiful weather. Having games, immaculate vibes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was about 50 wagons in the party. But uh, James Reed's wagons were a little different. He spent a little extra coin on them. <laughs> they were custom built, and they were two stories with beds on the top layer, entrances on the side like a stagecoach. Damn. <laughs> He had like a rolling hotel. He was a baller. Yeah. yeah. The rest Typical of the wagons grid. grew to resent Reed and his wagons as they were not only a flash of wealth to the rest of the migrants, but also pretty bulky and slow and required more oxen. That's really funny. Like, asshole, we're trying to get here fast. <laughs> yeah. Also, that is dumb. Like, you're not going to live in your wagon at the end of the journey. You're really blowing all the money on the fucking wagon? On the whip, not the crib. <sighs> fucking Irish. <laughs> on may 26th they reached the big blue river in kansas man you guys are something with names out in the midwest induce to <laughs> recent my river, state. Huh? <laughs> yeah, fuck that state enough. due to recent heavy rain it raised the body of water by 20 feet and if anyone who plays oregon trail yep, knows this is essentially just oregon trail yeah you don't want to try to float a you can't ford that river and b you don't want to try to float it so you got to either find a fucking ferry or wait or die. By yeah. the way, they're trying to go to California. IA. Okay. Not Oregon. Not Oregon. Yeah. They spent a few days on the banks building rafts to navigate the river with their wagons and belongings. Unfortunately, a member of the party, Sarah Keys, died of tuberculosis on May 29th. Mm. Classic. That, br that reminds me of, uh, I don't know if you guys are old enough to have done this, but did you guys have like Oregon Trail in your cl on your classroom computers when yes. you were in school? Yeah, we had the floppy disk. Yep. Okay, cool. So we did too, obviously. And uh, a really fun thing we would do is just like obviously it's not multiplayer in Oregon Trail, but, no, you, but you and make your, your friends buddy, die. you and your buddy, each on a computer right next to each other, you just do a race. 
to see who can get to Oregon the fastest. But like also, for some reason, instead we wouldn't name it after. Sometimes we named it after our friends, but we'd also just like like I had a buddy who was just like so horny, just like in like he, like you know puberty was hitting him early, and he was just like the horniest person alive. Get to alive. the point, my man. He was just like name them like Pam Anderson and like Yasmin Bleeth and like Britney Spears, <laughs> yes, like everyone was just or whatever who was hot <laughs> by that. Just like Ed Christina Aguilera right. was just in the wagon, so it would just be like Christina Aguilera died of dysentery, and you'd be like, no, Christina, no, Christina. It's like, dude, it's what happens when you go to grueling pace. It's true, especially when you have these reed wagons. <laughs> Hunting was so hard in that fucking game. Well, the whole point, if you really wanted to beat Oregon Trail, you just get bullets. You don't need anything else. <laughs> it's just just bullets. stack bullets. Always have food. They really should, though, have a thing where it's like, the ferry costs $20. And it's like, would you like to pay the ferryman or stick him up and make him, <laughs> Dude, oh, make okay. him take you okay, across? Okay, so Blood Meridian. We're just Blood Meridian Trail. We're going to do it that way. No, <gasps> it's Red Dead Trail. Red Dead Trail. Yeah. Or any real Western trail. Yeah. I mean, like, you. They, they where is skin? Where are the ferryman's skin? Yeah. Like, yeah. I just don't know what Blood Meridian is. So that's that one book that Jake read. It's that the one only time. book I've ever read. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if how many people are going to get that reference. They specifically hijack a ferry. The Cormac McCarthy novel that they ha- like, the famous one that they have not made a movie. It it would be just it would be just endless scenes of violence. That's why it's just like a lot of. You'd be proud of me, fucked. Jake. I finally got a book this year. What book are you reading? I got a Chow, uh, Charles Bukowski book. Oh, cool. Ham I hate him. <laughs> hate him, bro. You know what his headstone says? <laughs> Don't that he, try. That he fucked. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> we really need to stop being such stereotypical podcasters. You're reading Cormac McCarthy. He's reading Bukowski. Yeah. That piece of shit, his whole thing is like, find something you love and let it kill you. It's like, you just loved yourself, dickhead. Yeah. yeah you let killed it kill yourself. You. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Fair enough, yeah. Rob. Fine, I'll change my interests for you. So they gave Sarah Keys a proper funeral, and they decided to cross the river two days later. They only brought enough food for a four-month journey, which was optimistic to reach California in such a short period of time. They essentially uh, did not account for any mishaps along the way. That's so smart. But they accounted for a two-story wagon, but nothing else could go wrong. They wanted more Room in the wagon for their personal things. Why would anything go wrong? <laughs> I love that attitude. Planning for failure is planning to fail. Yes. <laughs> I think it's the other way around. No. If you have a plan B, it means your plan A is not going to work. Yeah. Planning for plan to fail. It's fail to plan, plan to fail. Nope. It's, it's go big plan or to go fail, home. Fail to plan. No, it's plan to fail, plan to fail. <laughs> Yeah, it's plan to fail, plan to fail. I think I'm having a stroke now. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. They had about 100. Yeah, they weren't confident enough. No. Sorry. I'm they, just saying, they weren't confident enough. They didn't use their reality distortion fields, you know. They had about 150 pounds of flour and 75 pounds of meat for each person and rations of rice, beans, and cornmeal. How do they not have enough food? They pick up more people. Uh, oh, <laughs> oh, no. It's so dumb. So they're planning for the best case scenario. Then they're like, "Hey, that's like it's like you're you're driving across the country, and some someone has calculated exactly how much money you need for exactly how much gas you need for the amount of people in the car and the weight of the car and like, what the wind and and weather is going to be. Yeah. And then you're like, "Hey." Yeah, we could pick up a couple of hitchhikers. Yeah, oh, a couple. Get the obese hitchhiker in here right now. He's breaking a sweat. He's going to yeah. drop dead. We got to get him in here. Yeah, no, I I can't imagine being this stupid. No, but you also need protection. You're going against, like, natives, the wild. Yeah, and all you brought was toddlers. <laughs> really dumb. grown men. These uh, people are... We have established on this show that if all of us and our families had to go, you would just start chucking my toddlers <laughs> at yeah, wild bears. We'd yeet your baby. <laughs> the first time we heard a bush rustle. <laughs> So it's like later, Finn. Clearly, you think toddlers have some use on the trail. <laughs> Two miles out of St. Louis. <laughs> later, just, Rory. Sorry, I'm just thinking of me and Dan on a wagon with like 30 toddlers. <laughs> like the second we see a large animal, just like yo, out, you're gone. <laughs> just one of you. The the weakest, get out. 
In June, the party reached Fort Laramie, Wyoming, a week late. They were warned several times about the new untested Hastings cutoff route. But they're like, yo, this shortcut is going to save us 300 miles. I don't hate it. <laughs> I mean, you got We can just... all Monday morning quarterback the people that had to eat each other. <laughs> Wait till you hear about it. Wait till you hear about this cutoff. We can all Monday morning quarterback. <laughs> it's, it's 2020, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So a man by the name of James Kleiman recently returned from the Hastings cutoff and reported to James Reed that the path was barely passable on foot alone, let alone or let alone wagons. Kleiman said it would be an impossible feat and to stick to the conventional California road. This guy's clearly never seen a two story wagon before because <laughs> those can go over anything, I imagine. Uh no, because there's trees that they have to like cut down and <laughs> take out. It's not a path. <laughs> uh, I just don't think your attitude's right, man. Okay. Yeah, that, not with that attitude, you know? Now, this was coined by Lansford Hastings and his immigrant guide to Oregon and California that included the shortcut. The party pretty much relied on it as gospel because they planned on meeting up with this man to guide them through. Unfortunately for them, Hastings never actually traveled the path himself. <laughs> Is it his travel guide, though? It's in his travel guide. And it's gospel? <laughs> and he named it him after himself. <laughs> and he didn't travel on it. It's a kind of a dick move, man. You know? I think we found who the Hitler was. <laughs> yeah. Hastings. Already. First people to explore America. I'd never been to America. I mean, this is by definition confusing map for territory. <laughs> like, everyone that's ever done it's like, don't do this. Yeah. And you're like, I got this. I read it in a book. No, nah, I'm good. I'm yeah. good. This would be his first trek through the entire path with a large party and wagons and his experience on the trail. This is like if the guy from Into the Wild was minuscule at best. Like he maybe hit some parts of the trail, but he didn't do the whole thing. Mm. It's like the guy from Into the Wild didn't go himself, but led an entire fucking party <laughs> to the bus. Yeah. Oh, my God. Trust me, guys. These berries are sick. The Donner Party planned on meeting Hastings at Fort Bridger, but since they were two weeks late, Hastings bailed. And they never cross paths at the fort. Yeah, I mean, what's he supposed to do? Wait there forever? They have cell phones. Two weeks is too many. Throughout their journey, they would pick up stray families and individuals to beef up their numbers, like I said previously, to make up for that initial split of... uh, When they got to the Fort Laramie, there was a couple couple people who disagreed to go with the Hastings Trail. Oh, They're really? like, ah, we're just going to stick with the, the regular route. We're going to go the well-traveled road. Oh, you mean the people that God favored? Did he? Yes, he favored them with intelligence. It was like, hey, you, you heard the local that said this thing is impassable? We're going to do the thing that Maybe sounds, go the long way. We're going to go the long way. Maybe sometimes it's it's nice to check out the scenic route. This is just a classic case of someone being like, they're trying to fuck me. Like, they're trying to fuck me over. And, you know, no one's trying to fuck you over. And you end up fucking yourself over because you think someone's trying to fuck so you. So at this fort, they pick up the families, the Graves, the Breens, the Murphys, the Kiesbergs, the Edies, and the McCutcheons. More Irish. Along with, you know, a few a few other stragglers. <laughs> Just hobos. <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> like, come on in. We got enough meat for none of you. Need some <laughs> hands. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, you got a barrel for clothes? Get in here. (laughs) A journalist named Edward Bryant heard about the Donner Party and had experience with this cutoff. He wrote letters to the fort telling them, do not at any cost try to do this. Please, for the love of God. Well, he went up, he went down the trail and was like, this isn't a trail. This is a forest. He had been through it before and he heard about this party going through. He's like, dude, no. Not so he kept work. riding to the fort, uh, Bridger Fort. Unfortunately, all the letters went to Jim Bridger, who conveniently had a trading post there. Jim Bridger's the wild man, right? I have no idea. Uh, he's famous. Hold on, let me look him up. I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Well, this guy burned the letters because he thought if the Hastings cut off started to pop off and became more popular, his trading post would obviously make more money. Right. So we threw out the letters or burned them. Classic. Well, that's just for yeah. business. James Felix 
Jim Bridger was an American mountain man, trapper, army scout, and wilderness guide. I think, I think that is the guy who Brad Pitt says he's descended from in um, uh, the World War II movie. Fuck, Quentin Tarantino. Inglorious oh, Bastards. Inglorious Bastards, yeah. yeah. I'm Jim Bridger. Man, wow, Jim Bridger. Hmm. I'm pretty sure he says he's Jim Bridger's descendant. Interesting. Sounds right. I'm not going to question you. Nor should you. No. Gospel. So the letters get burned. They go down Hastings' uh, route. Hastings cut off. And they start finding letters from Hastings attached to wooden stakes. He's like, <laughs> I know I bailed on you guys, but uh, if you guys want to meet up later. What? He's just leaving them breadcrumbs of letters? Yeah. Yep. Of invite? Like, he's just, like, shooting them texts? Like, he ghosted them, but is still, like, texting? Yeah, I dipped. Like, this hey, place sucks, but... Uh, you up? Yeah. And this is when they reached the Wasatch Mountains. He uh, wrote, the road ahead was incredibly rough, and it would not be wise to continue down the road, but he did offer to meet up with them and guide them through another path. I mean, at some point, it's not a road. No. It's just... It's a direction you're going through yeah. wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. The Donners agreed to stay and wait for Hastings. Over a week went by and Hastings never showed. So <laughs> Reed and a few others set out themselves to find this shifty guide, who they eventually found. Where was he? He was just kind of out in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> just chilling in the woods? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> He's just out of the, yeah, this is where I hang. So he offers to take them through this new unproven path that he has never done before either. The second one, <laughs> se- but they made it through the first one. No, they're not through it. Oh, okay. They're in the midst of it, it's like and they, he's like, I have another cooler path inside this. They path. like yeah. you. You go to the entrance. You maybe make it like half a mile, and then he's like, you know what? This road's too tough. I got another thing going. I got another <laughs> thing cooking. I got another. What's the iron in the fire God. here? It's it's, it's just, he doesn't know where the first way was anyway. This is just honestly, I know that there are you know people now, people today, between social media and and everything, you know, whatever, a, a thousand different truths that people have are like this is a grifter's paradise. But man, no, been spending was, all of lives living in a grifter's paradise. There was no better time to be a grifter than Western expansion, yeah. manifest destiny. Oh my oh, fuck God. yeah, dude! Snake I can't imagine salesman. any time. I mean, you know, all of history is kind of a nightmare, but like. God damn. I, it's not only you could move to a different city. It's like you could go start another state. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you could become the governor of a place if you move. That's kind of the story yeah. of Deadwood. I think yeah. that's most outlaws, right? They just go to another town and become sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm just the best gun guy here, so I'm the well, law now? I've worn out my welcome. Better yeah. move eight miles. <laughs> yeah. Start a new life. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why you had to go all the way to California. Eh? No, yeah. Just, it's you know, the furthest you can go. Down the street. Just go to Kansas, man. I kind of get just go as far as you can. <laughs> no, because then you know you know just get, move over to the next town where you're welcome there, and then the next town, next town, you know, keep moving down the road. Despite already proving he was completely untrustworthy and unreliable, they agreed to let him do so. This new route was incredibly treacherous because, well, it wasn't a route at all. Days were added as things like removing trees to get wagons through were a part of their daily routine. The party was traveling. Only 1.5 miles a day through this tough stretch. Yikes. Not good. Not great. For context, Pioneers would average around 15. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So way behind. Man, 15 miles a day, it's by no- the way, is also awful. That doesn't it's sound like nothing. That bad. It's nothing. If that's all you're doing all day, you're just walking. But I mean, like or they're in, in wagons, wagons and shit. So let's say this: a wa- walking, you go. What's a walk? Like five, five miles, miles an, an hour? hour? Yeah, just about. So you could walk probably fifteen like, miles in three hours. Yeah, I mean, like taking breaks and stuff. You could probably get like, I don't know, like you probably get fifteen truly, sounds like, slow. Fifty miles. It is slow. For example, I mean, for context, that would be a bad march for a Napoleonic army, and this is thirty years after Napoleon. Like Napoleon's whole thing was. He, he was like Blitzkrieg before Blitzkrieg. Like he just fucking moved. He he could march dudes real, real well without totally wearing them out and shit like that. He just yeah. had a good marching army. Yeah, fifteen miles in a day. That's like light work for an a whole army full of wagons. Yeah. As they're crossing these mountains, they're about eighty-seven deep. Just kind of context for how many people were in the party. Yeah. 
Once they get through the Wasout Mountains, the party was deeply unprepared for the desert conditions of Salt Lake. So you get a little mountain, a little desert. You get a lot of different yeah. climates. It's America, baby. Where where are they about right now? They're in Utah. They're in Lake. Utah. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Wagons were routinely getting stuck in sandy elements. Water su- supplies were very low. And oxen Good. were just either dying or running off. Just leaving? Like, <laughs> fuck this. Even the animals were like, you know what? You guys Ew. are stupid. You guys are dumb. Take my chances with the wolves. <laughs> yeah. Or just dying in They'll the desert. They'll be faster. Yeah. yeah. On September 26, they reached the Humboldt River and finished uh, the Hastings Cutoff. They made it. <laughs> All Yay. right. How many died? Not that many yet. Okay. But we're only in... So it was mostly just long and annoying. We're only in Utah. Okay. Well, it's it delays them quite, yeah. a, quite a bit. Okay. And that's an important note, that they were only going 1.5 miles a day. Yeah. And they that, basically weren't... I mean, if they're going to California and they're in Utah and that's how fast they're going, they're fucked. They're going to hit a certain location when they shouldn't hit the location. Somewhere, I imagine, in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Yeah. That would be correct, right? Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere between San Francisco and Lake Tahoe. They were a month behind schedule and decided it would be best. You know what? Let the cattle chill for a few days. Give them a break. The ox and the cattle. Yeah, they had cattle, too, that they just didn't need. They were just driving cattle. They're like, oh, we'll have this here. We'll have it for us to make our new life. I mean, in theory, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. They had a problem with the cattle, though. Natives would just go and steal them. Yeah, yeah. Quite not? often, they uh they ended up losing hundreds of cattle. Yeah, yeah. it sounds right. One you know incident I mean? where they lost twenty one in one night. That's really bad. Imagine. Let me put it. It's, it's like. Imagine you're, you're walking from one end of the country to the other today, and you you just have all your money on you, but the way you have it on you isn't a wallet. You tie hundred dollar bills to a rope, and you just drag that rope behind you. Yeah. From one end of the country to the other, ten thousand dollars worth of hundred dollar bills. It's a seventy five yard rope. Yeah, <laughs> like so. Roughly I, during this stretch in Utah, oxen are running off or dying, cattle are getting stolen and gone. They kind of have to ditch a couple of these wagons because they have to manually pull them. Oh my god! Ooh, not fun. Don't have enough toddlers for that. <laughs> Uh, the toddler strategy is just where they they went wrong from. No, the they day. they picked up a lot of grown men on the way. There's 87 now. The 31 was, you know, only half toddler. Okay, okay, fair enough. There's plenty of grown men in this party. That's a bad toddler ratio, though. <laughs> That's a ter- half toddlers. It shouldn't be one to one. No, it's god awful. <laughs> Maybe teenagers too. <laughs> I didn't look into There's the like specific a numbers. There's like a 10 year old as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a 13 year old. We'll get to. So they had to manually pull these wagons. The group began getting kind of testy, especially towards James Reed. Yeah, you uh, pull a wagon yourself for a couple days, and you start to fucking hate everybody. Yeah, I imagine so. Which is why I don't still think it's weird that you're like, I had a great weekend shoveling limestone. Because he's doing it as a hobby. Mm. It was a hobby. It's just like I wanted to landscape my art. I come in from... Yeah, but you're doing it... You're not doing it seriously. You're doing it as... I mean, seriously. You're not doing it professionally. No. You're I, not doing it day in and day out. No, it's not my life. Well, there's no, doing it there's no stakes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fine. Like, it's, I can take a break whenever I want, <laughs> you know? You're using it to just, like, connect with your wife. I'm using it just to make my house look better. Yeah. But, hmm. On October 5th, two wagons got caught up in one another, and the driver, John Snyder, started whipping the few remaining oxen. Reed didn't care for this. And he ordered him to stop, and when Snyder told him to fuck off, Reed stabbed him in the stomach. Oh, nice. that's a good move. Yeah. Yeah. Killing Snyder days later from the wounds. Road rage. Oh, my God. He had one, He had a festering wound. Death. A festering stomach wound. Yeah, I mean, if you, that, you can bleed out pretty long on your stomach. Damn. I, I believe they show that in Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. He's shot in the stomach. It's, it's just it's alive like, the whole movie. I, I actually remember... Um, we talked about this before in another episode, but that Civil War book I talked about reading as a kid, mm. one of his friend, like an older guy, it's like some, like a friend's dad who he's serving in the Confederate Army with, <laughs> gets shot in the stomach. And that just like has a horrible, painful, long death. 
in this children's book. Yeah. Well, like middle school book. Right. Yeah. Right. It's like for a seventh grader. Yeah, yeah, like fifth, sixth, seventh grade. Yeah. A That's deliberation. Awful. Sorry, God. Between the group on how to handle this murder broke out. Some wanted him hung, but ultimately it was decided that Reed would be exiled from the group and <laughs> left to wander the desert by himself. That's, I mean, he's got as good a shot as them at this point. I, right? Yeah. I just, I'd be he's like, going right. to travel faster than them. Yeah. Oh, he's light. Yeah. Two days after shunning Reed, another older member of the party named Hardcoop was growing weak and could not continue. So they threw him out of the wagon and left him to die. Good Lord. <laughs> These people are brutal. So they got mad at one guy for murdering someone and then immediately turn around and murder a person for being weak. Old. Old. Yeah. You brought him. I, I believe You invited him. I blame the toddlers for this as well. I imagine it's some sort of children of the corn situation. Their eyes just turn red. No. They're like, kill. Kill the weak one. Kill the outlander. A few days after this, a man named Wolffinger was killed by Native Americans in a gunfight. And a week after that, William Pike was shot and killed in an alleged accident. Hmm. So it's slowly developing, like devolving into chaos over here. I think it just sounds like an average trip west. <laughs> I will turn this wagon around. You think so? So help me God. You think this is how a lot of them went? Kind of. What do you think, like, the success rate? Like, until they start eating each other. I, I don't know. You could probably look it up, like, how, what the mortality rate of a trip west was. I, I'm really curious about that, so I'm going to look that up while you go, Dan. Charles Stanton decided to ride ahead and reach Sutter's Fort, getting two new Hispanic companions that assured the party it would not snow in the Sierra Nevadas until November. So the group pushed on, but as luck would have it, snow began a little early that year. Oh, surprisingly low mortality rates on at least the Oregon Trail. What was it? Four to six percent of immigrants wow. died. I, that is shockingly low to Yeah, me. so this party... Not doing great. They are on the bottom. Really, you know, tilts the statistics. <laughs> yeah. They reached Truckee Lake and encountered a snowed-in blocked pass. So they had no Nevada. choice but to hunker down and ride out the winter in the Sierra Nevadas. Yeah. In the middle of the mountains. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People do that for fun now. Yeah, they're they're in the a vacation to the mountains. They're in a beautiful spot. They Nevada. really are. It's yeah. a scenic death. Truckee, Truckee's pretty solid. Like they're right by Tahoe. That's really funny. Yeah. There's they're, actually if you drive from Tahoe to San Francisco, you take the Donner Pass. Like you drive oh. it. Yeah. That's funny. It got named after them. Mm -hmm. Food supplies were already scarce, and everything went fast. William Eddy was a brief hero after killing and bringing back a bear to the party, but that meat was gone in the blink of an eye. Obviously, he had to share a bear with, you know, 80 people. That's like one meal. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more than one meal. I don't know, man. Uh, you could, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it is, but, like, it's not a lot. It's got to be, uh, it's also a bear in winter. Maybe it's, been, uh, it's, a, a top well, that would so be a fat bear if it was Yeah, winter. it would be a fat bear, so, like, maybe a week. Yeah. You could stretch it. You really could. I mean, bones for bra. Well, here we go. Once they ran out of food, they ate cow bones and hide, followed by leather, tree bark, and then uh, what they were using for the roofing of their makeshift shelters. What was that? Poop? More hide. Oh, oh just hide. See, and I feel like this is one of those things where these are the type of people that didn't ration correctly, too. Like, you got to imagine, like, they weren't looking... A month ahead. They were like, oh, shit, we got a bunch of meat. Let's eat it all. Yeah. Oh, man, we're ahead of schedule. Yeah. And Extra they... meat tonight in the stew, boys. <laughs> right. Things got pretty desperate, so 17 individuals known as the Snowshoe Party in the camp attempted to make it on foot through the pass and get help. No. Nah. That's like those dudes that leave the grocery store in the mist. Yeah, they don't come back. Well, yeah, they got lost two days in. Yeah. And without food, a, na a man named Patrick Dolan... Threw out the idea. Some were already probably thinking. Better start eating each other. Of course. Yeah. Cannibalism. Did they start with the veal? Well, they Top debated the how they would decide who should be sacrificed for the group. But before they could start picking straws, a teamster named Antonio keeled over and died. Oh, perfect. Hey. 
Team player. Definitely team player. Franklin Graves followed soon after. Oh, Boom. damn. Two bodies. Boom. Two. Quick. They started uh, on those two guys, and Man, it was like pretty quick when the people started to get delirious and crazy from eating human. Oh, they got mad cow right away. Patrick Dolan died running through the snow naked. Okay. After eating. At, at, like right after eating? Not f- far I think, after. I think he had a panic attack. That's the, I think that's nerves more than anything. It's not nerves. It's literally just these brutal months combined with eating another human. It, yeah. Everything just, there was a tipping point, right? That is nerves. Th- that's, that's a panic quite attack. literally nerves. That's yeah. what I'm saying. He's having it's, a panic attack. He's having like a nervous breakdown. I think he just lost it. I don't the, even know what if are, it's a panic we attack. We were saying the same thing. I know, but panic attack makes it sound worse. Or not worse, but like almost not as, he's frantic. Insane. He, he he went insane. He had, okay, he had a psychotic break. Yes. Okay. He wasn't just having like a, oh my God, I'm losing my mind. Like he started he, doing snow angels naked. Yeah. I mean, that probably combined, like you said, with the conditions and the, he probably probably was having hypothermia. Fucking too. exhausted. Yeah. And it's like, I just ate a dude. I, what the fuck am I doing? What the fuck Some am I of doing? the more noble individuals in the group decided to just starve. They didn't want to eat human. Respect, honestly. Fair. Also, like, a part of you's got to be like, that guy's gross. <laughs> you I don't know, that dude. Do Dolan. You wanna, yeah. Do you want to eat a fat guy, or do you want to eat or like an old guy? What? You know what I mean? It's just like. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Do you smell it cooking though? Yeah, you gotta cook. I guess. That's the, that's the thing that I bet gets everybody. You're hungry, and someone's like, "Fuck it, we're doing this," and you're like, "I don't want to," and then they start roasting. You're like, and you're oh, like, boy. smelling pretty good. Yeah. Cooking meat is cooking meat at a certain point. I'm not mad. <laughs> yeah. Like, Ooh, it's kind of barbecued. All right. Those who decided to starve, of course, became food. (laughs) (laughs) It's like you're either going to eat us or you're going to be eaten. It's literally eat or be eaten. Yeah. January 19th, what was left of the snowshoe party reached the Johnson Ranch in the Sacramento Valley. Hey, they made it. (laughs) William Eddy then went to Sumter Fort to request help to go back for the rest of the Donner Party. And he discovered... But James Reed made it too. <laughs> oh, the guy they sent out exiled? in exile? The man they exiled. He All made right. it to the fort. He was yeah. like, yeah, it was easy. Alone. Oh, my God. So the best. this is the best fate they could have abandoned yeah. me to, like left me to. And Reed himself was trying to put together a search party because his family was with the rest of the people. Yeah. Oof. He was like, where are they? Yeah. So he was trying to like get a re- rescue party going. However, if you recall, this is 1846. A little war going on. A little war going on. Can't really uh, spare any troops with the uh, Mexican-American War happening. And they're going to California? Which is a Mexican territory. Not even part of America at that point. Yikes. Won't be for a couple years. I... What were these... You know what? They were getting there at the right time, though. (laughs) Apparently. I mean, three years later. Colonel at the fort decided we can spare the troops, but you gotta wait till February. I would be so annoyed if I was a troop. I'd be like, dude, what? We gotta go on another fucking trip through the mountain. It's like in uh, Aliens when they're annoyed they have to go save the colonists. And they're like, goddamn fucking colonists. Yeah. Uh, yeah, after a war, especially the Mexican-American one, you'd be like, no. no, they're in the war. You don't even get to get some. You gotta go find a bunch of idiots in a mountain. Yeah, you're not even on like a... a you're, f- you're not even fighting anybody. No, you're yeah. not with Zachary Taylor or, or Winfield Scott. And you just no. know they're not human at this point. You know what they've done. Oh, yeah. It's like, how long have they been out there? No. Just leave it. <laughs> Don't even. Let it be. First relief team was led by William Eddy. Reached the camp on February 18th, 1847. They found a dozen dead and most survivors in a state of shock. Evidence of cannibalism at the camp. Both Don and brothers died along with their wives. The relief team could only take back 23 people with them. Out of? Out of, uh, I think it was, there's another like 20 or so left. Oh, man. It's just like, hey, we got to leave you guys. Sorry, you got to leave you guys here. There might be more at this point, but eventually. Yeah. So the final number, the people, the amount of people that make it, uh, 89 people went into the Sierra Nevada mountains 48 came out honestly for as Not grim bad. as they make the donner party sound the fact that 50 over 50 percent made it that's not bad could be worse again you said 
the rate was six percent. Yeah, oh, I it's know, catastrophic. Failure. I'm just saying with the 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 <laughs> reputation of the Donner Party, where it makes it sound like everybody. I'm, I'm a- sure it was a nightmare, Rob. I'm just. Uh, I'm just saying people over overplaying. I don't for, think so. For how <laughs> stupid these people were, I think it's a miracle that many survived. Yeah, batting like, 500 for these morons is... Like, that's pretty incredible. They kept bringing on extra mouths. Yeah. Like, they planned for zero mishaps. Also, like, the two uh, Hispanic homies they, they picked up along the way that were, like, guiding them through the Sierra Nevadas, they killed an eight. Well, I mean... <laughs> of course they did. They sh- why not? Yeah. What? Of course they did. Right. So you don't really have any no. affiliation with us. I have a question for you. Weren't they like insanely close to help the whole time or something like that too? Wasn't that like a whole part of it? No. Okay. There wasn't a fort just over the, uh, just well, over the mountain. The fort is the one that yeah, they're yeah, talking yeah. about. But yeah, the pass is completely blocked. It's snowed in. Mm. And yeah, they couldn't. They had to wait an entire month for the rescue party. Mm. Yeah, I mean like. From proximity, though, like I'm sure it was, I guess, relatively close. It's wild, I believe, how close they were actually. Yeah, but like you know, it was a quarter mile. (laughs) It's like yeah, they could see it. No, it's not like Like, that. But ten ten miles back then ain't ten miles now. Well, they're only getting one and a half miles a day, Right. right? Like yeah. Some of these people also died on the way back. Some waited for the or died waiting for the second relief team, and some died when they eventually made it. There was a story of a kid. That was uh, so hungry, so yeah. starved, that when he did eventually get to the fort and was able to eat food, he consumed too much and his stomach just kind of fucking... Yep, that was a problem with the uh, concentration camp yeah. survivors, man. Yeah. yeah. They died a lot. That's a that. good scene in, in Banner Brothers, actually. Like, Don't fucking... When the doctor has to be like, you gotta stop fucking feeding them right now. Yeah. You gotta lock them back up or they're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There was a, I believe when they went back for like the second or even the third rescue party, there was one guy left who uh, very clearly murdered the rest of the party around him. (laughs) I mean, at that point. (laughs) Him in a circle of dead people, like missing chunks. Yeah. Whatever. No one faced (laughs) faced charges for murder or cannibalism. They're not even in America. Who's charging them? The Mexican government that they're trying to throw out? Yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing going on. But they had a reputational hit for the rest of their lives. You ate somebody. Just move hey, another town over. It's not and a good reputation to have. Hey, they don't have the sailor's code. The sailor's forgiveness. You remember that? Or like oh, yeah. Sailors, it's like, we get you it. were at sea. It's all right. We get it. Yeah, yeah, what happens at sea, different rules. What happens when you're a dumbass and get lost in the snow? <laughs> what, uh, yeah. On you. When There's no winter rules. Yeah. And that is the Donner Party and the James James Reed Party. Our no, guy, the James Reed Party made it. Well, <laughs> Reed made it. It's a party one. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how much of his family survived. Doubtful many. He made it. That's all I care about. <laughs> I'm sure he cared about his kids and shit. He had a perfectly fine life what are you in talking Springfield, about? Missouri. Or yeah, Springfield, Illinois. He's moved six states over. He's fine. He's going to yeah. just start a new family. You're right. He had a fine life. Now, were they going for the gold rush? No. Oh, yeah, I think they didn't have, yeah, that was 49. That's what I was saying. Like, they were getting there at the right time. Yeah, oh, yeah, Early, yeah. you know? Just import. Maybe I'll do a follow-up episode on, like, James Reed. What he ended up doing? Crushing it. What <laughs> if he did crush? Yeah. The wealthiest man in California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was almost named Reed Sylvania. And <laughs> that is the story of the Donner Party. What you guys learned today? Um, I learned that. Don't pick up hitchhikers. Don't pitch up, pick up hitchhikers ever. Don't ever do that. And then I kind of, I did. there's something, man, you almost got killed by that sword, sword in the skeleton. Yeah. Um, would have been, you know, on cue for this episode. That would have been pretty ironic if he died telling the Donner Party. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, I, do, I would eat a little bit of you in honor of the episode. If I he died right did. here. I would get the, the cigar lighter over there. We just like just get a toe. Off a little bit. Get a toe. Yeah. You no, know, see what it's like. Take a chunk of that ass. A little bacon. There's actually a big enough knife here. We can yeah, a little that. Dan bacon. Yeah, we could do that. Plenty to spare there. Yeah. A little pulled pork. <laughs> the medic shows up. What are you doing? Yeah. You said it was fine. <laughs> it's February. Of it's winter. on film. Yeah. You got we proof. have the evidence. You can't legally say it's okay for us to eat you and we eat you, unfortunately, in this fucking free country we live in. I learned um, that you should probably not trust a random dude who's like, yeah, don't worry. 
I got this. <laughs> don't trust everything you read. Like, trust the people that are in the locale, not just the map that someone wrote. Yeah. I'm, I, well, I mean, I learned what we were talking about earlier. Planning for failure is planning for failure. Planning for success clearly is also planning for failure. Bring more food. Maybe the two-story wagons isn't the move. It's uh, definitely not. No. I'm surprised a gust of wind didn't knock one of those fuckers out. I, I'm trying to fathom what it really looked like. Because, like, in my head, you know, there's this, like... It's just a taller... It's a tall wagon. wagon. And yeah. you have bed. And, like, the there's story. a ladder and, like, shit. I like, wouldn't feel comfortable sleeping on that second story. It'd be story. like a trailer. Yeah. But, like, like... Joel in the back. Towed by some... It's like a trailer towed by a VW Golf. <laughs> you know, like, it's just... I don't understand. Maybe you need more oxen. Yeah. No, I mean, you said they did. I just... The fact they planned for no mishaps. Zero. Zero buffer. We're getting in right on budget. Planning for failure is planning for failure. So is planning to succeed outright, clearly. Who is today's Hitler? Hmm. We said Hastings. It could be somebody else, though. I said Hastings. I think everyone who planned it, everyone who planned that trip and said, we James don't need... James Reed, because he also survived. <laughs> he... I think he got exiled. He stabbed the guy just to get exiled on purpose. He's Brilliant move. Yeah. Get away from your family. <laughs> like, tired you know of what? them. I am... That We've all been there on mouth. family vacation. You just need to get need away. Need time away, yeah. Yeah, now your dad just screams at a waiter. Reed stabbed the guy. Yeah. Yeah. So we're softer. Yeah, we're softer we used to be now. a proper country. He stabbed a guy because he was upset that he was hurting the oxen. <laughs> Weird move. Well, whipping the oxen. Whipping them. To probably Because he, was, he, he believed he was hurting the oxen. <laughs> the oh, I thought he said herding. No, hurting. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the you know, the oxen... Probably didn't want to move as much, and the guy was trying to get them to He's move. Like, get the fuck, dude! People like their animals. He's probably yeah. like, "Stop whipping! I like these animals. Stop fucking hurting them." At a certain point, I'm eating the oxen. Uh, yeah, I mean, eat you the oxen before you eat the people. I imagine the oxen were. I think <laughs> the Hitler is whoever came up with the idea for people to pull the wagons themselves because <laughs> he probably didn't do it. Oh, no, definitely not. He's like, it's probably a woman. <laughs> it's probably Every a- woman that didn't pull that wagon, or an old guy. Really? And the old too. Oh, yeah. actually, well, everyone for throwing the old guy out. <laughs> the old guy yeah, got his old guy comeuppance. <laughs> Hard coop. I guarantee you, he was the one that thought of it. He was probably a hobo, like Rob said. Yeah. Where'd we find you? <laughs> like, who, who, who likes this guy? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> You're in the stock gayer. pot, my man. Like, get in there. It's You're very weird shit. Yeah. You want a really He's hot? Always ba- like at third in line at worst for meals every day. He yeah. says creepy stuff all the time. Yeah. Never pulls a share. Just yeah, he hasn't pulled a wagon one day, one fucking day. Yeah, he's always just too happy to eat. <laughs> nah, man. Hey, you want Back the hottest up. bath you've ever had, brother? Get in there. Get in that cauldron. That's our episode for today. Again, not going to promote it. Patreon.com slash softcore history. Two additional episodes every week. Evergreen content. We got two years of a back catalog. We have game shows. We have a normal episode like this. We have voicemails. A lot of more uh, user-friendly content. We have a Discord that you get access to, so you can kind of all talk to each other and meet up and whatnot but again i'm not going to promote this i'm not going to promote our why we're not going to do it don't do that oh uh, we also have a youtube which i'm not going to promote <laughs> software history on youtube you get to see our lovely faces in 4k i don't know if rob likes that what's 4k 4000 i look good this week so like i like my looks this week yeah rob's looking hot happy birthday rob hmm Is that preemptive for next year no, it's belated. I'm not going to do it. I don't, didn't expect you to. Never expected that out of you. Mm, good. Make sure to leave a review. Five stars, please, and thank you so I can drink again. We are about 50 away, so need. I don't care what you leave, but just leave a review. Five. Well, we care that you leave five stars. I Someone would, left four. Yeah, but I think that's a knock at me because I've, I've been on record saying I why leave four stars that's a yeah that's a bit we don't want you to do though <laughs> do five stars you stop doing that bit that's not a good bit that, that bit hurts us materially <laughs> but thanks for tuning in ladies and gentlemen we love you um if you listen every week if you don't maybe not so much we like you if you're just tuning in it's your first episode you're chill you know i'm not re- i don't really know you so maybe you should keep showing up and 
we'll develop a relationship. I already love all of you, so yeah. But I guess you can try and win over Dan's affection if that's. I don't your like thing. to just throw out love willy nilly. Yeah, we know. It's yeah. You don't even. F- I, I'm sorry. Why would you throw it out? You don't feel anything. I s- don't even think you like your dog. I love Chase, but it I took didn't him buy like, that. It took him like 13 years. He is 13. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he just got it. Chase is old. Chase is just minding his own business, like hard goop. Uh, Chase, Chase is kind of, hmm, like. Oh, I'm I'm old. He's getting uh, tossed out of a wagon. Oh, uh, I'm old. You know, like it's just like we get it, bro. You're old. Like everyone gets old, Jace. Come on. Anyway, thanks for tuning in for Rob Fox, Jake Coleman. I'm Dan Register, and you just got soft served. <laughs>